The Lost Son. I will refer just a little. You know, I won't say this, hear the little baby crying. With, with the slaughter going on with abortion now, that's, that's music to your ears. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's music. It's music because you, we're hearing less and less of that now. Amen. And um, so I, I won't refer to I won't say often, like I said, Thursday night, but uh, I did say in the introduction of this particular teaching last Thursday night that this particular text is commonly referred to uh, as the prodigal, the story of the prodigal son. Or in some Bibles, the heading says, the lost sons. And... Um, the word prodigal literally means to be wasteful, to be reckless. It is to be extravagant. All of us at some point in our lives have been are guilty of uh, being of prodigality, being like the prodigal son, throwing away our money and not putting it to good use and throwing away our time. Prodigal also means reckless behavior, uh, but one who leaves home and recklessly behaves, but later makes a repentant return. But when you name the text, the prodigal, prodigal, prodigal son, it infers that the story that Jesus told was only about the younger son. And that the only son who was guilty of prodigality was the younger, the youngest of the two boys. But our Lord clearly states when he gives this parable, and a parable is by definition, a comparison of natural things with spiritual things so that the natural things may be better understood. A parable may be an actual story. It may be a story, an illustration that was made up, but the, the point, the point of the parable is the significance of the parable. God bless Coach Hal Stewart. So glad to see you today. Amen. Man that I love like a father. It's always a privilege to have him. When Coach Stewart is here, it's like royalty. I get nervous because almost like dad's in the house. So am I doing all right, Coach? All right, sir. <laughs> Gave me a thumbs up. Amen. He will always be my coach. Jesus tells a story, and, and Jesus did something. Um, and, and I mentioned this last time. That's very different from what preachers do today. So much so that when preachers do it today, people are offended. Jesus gives three parables in this particular chapter that address his audience. See, the Lord, good preaching is never ignoring the 800 pound gorilla in the living room. You, you have to deal with the issues that are right before you. The text tells us that in attendance there were publicans. I, I, I didn't say republicans. Publicans. And publicans were tax collectors. They were hated uh, as they are today. Um, uh, they, they, it was a dishonest profession. The publicans were Jews who worked for the, for the Romans to get taxes from the Jewish people. But what they did was they would charge their own people 
a, a higher tax rate than Rome charged, then they would take the extra and keep it for themselves. And they, they made, a, made a big living out of it. They hired other people to work for them. And so they, 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 they had these exuberant tax rates. I don't know why any politician would think that somebody would be happy uh, to hear uh, uh, someone say, I'm going to raise your taxes. They raised the taxes. And so the Jews hated it. They considered those people to be ceremonially unclean, and they considered them to be traitors of their own people because of what they did with people taxes. When people work, people want to keep their money. Or they want to keep as much of their money as they can. Jesus even said, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but to God the things that are God's. See, like to me, Caesar, however, keeps wanting more and more and more. So the, the publicans were tax collectors. And the text says, and sinners. The sinners there was a broad word which meant people of every stripe who were immoral, wicked, uh, ungodly people, all right? Um, um, deplorables. These people came to hear Jesus preach. And not only were these wicked people there, but the text tells us that the religious leaders, the Pharisees, and the scribes were there. Uh, members of the Sanhedrin, the ruling religious and political party in uh, Israel. The Sanhedrin, the, the word uh, Pharisee means righteous ones or separated ones. Scribes were the lawyers of the law. So when Jesus got up to preach, he knew that there were Tax collectors in the audience. The Bible says all of them showed up. Sinners in the audience. And there were the religious people in the audience. And he knew that the religious people murmured that the publicans and the sinners were there. Now, we're told a whole lot in verse 1 and 2 if you read the Bible properly. Because you see automatically that the religious people were the ones who were off. The Bible teaches that Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. When the lost came to hear him, what did Luke tell us that the religious the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the, the Pharisees and the scribes, what their problem were. The Bible says that their problem with Jesus was that he, number one, received them. Well, what did you expect them to do? How are you going to preach to them unless you receive them? How are you going to minister to them unless you receive them? And the word receive, that literally comes from a Greek word, to re which means to receive as a friend. To receive for deliverance. Jesus was glad to see them. Because how else would they get saved unless he preached to them? That's a lesson that we can learn in that. You know, you have to be careful how you treat people who come to church who may not be exactly like you think they should be. Or exactly as they should be. Not everybody is churched. So, uh, so she know, uh, she, he or she, they know better than wearing something like that to church. In some cases they do, and in some cases they don't. But you don't win the argument by running them off. Let them hear the word of the Lord. Yeah. Ushers, you have a tremendous job. You have a, a difficult task. For there are those who will readily sit while you ask them to. 
There are those who just won't do it. Don't fight them. Because we want them to hear the word. Be polite. And we, we suggest that this is what you do. Because the ushers know what we're trying to do. But if someone is going to be contentious and they, they, they're, going to, they, they just, they're going to be stubborn, let them sit down. Don't, don't contend to the point that they decide to leave. Because if they leave, they don't hear the word. Amen. So, and then know how, know how to treat someone who sits near you. Be inviting. Someone told me the other day that they wanted to sit in a particular seat and they reached over and asked some people if that pew was open and, and uh, that the person's body language and attitude was like, you can't sit here. No, yes, they can. Yes, they can. And, and don't, you, know, you don't want me to catch you doing that to somebody because that's not Christian. Ain't nobody in here so wonderful that no one else can sit beside let them sit down. Praise the Lord. And you be kind and be inviting and you be loving and everything. Well, I don't want to sit beside that person because they may not smell quite right. Well, I'm going to show you in the text that when the prodigal, the younger boy came home, he left the hog pen and went home. He left, he left the hog pen and went home. And his daddy hugged him and the man smelled like pig manure. But his daddy was glad to see him. I can't get any help. So, the audience was mixed. The, the, the publicans are glad to be there. The sinners are glad. And Jesus' first two parables in Luke's gospel, chapter 15, is about the father searching for the lost. So, they were glad to know that Jesus would look for them and that Jesus would save them. Now, there are multiple scriptures that shows that even though they came to Jesus, they did, however, get instructions to get right. See, we're living in a day now where people want to come and they want to get saved, but they want to redefine salvation and change salvation to make salvation fit them. Well, when you get saved, salvation is not designed to fit you. You got to adjust to it. Luke tells us in chapter 3, when the publicans came to be baptized, that John the Baptist did give them a word of correction. They said, what must we do? John said, well, number one, stop charging people more taxes than you're supposed to. So he inserted correction. Jesus taught that a man had two sons, and he said to one son, uh, I go, go out to the, yard, to the vineyard and work, and the man said, I go, but he didn't go. And another son said he wasn't going to go, but he went. And Jesus said, which of the two obeyed? He said, the son who thought about it and changed his mind. On another parable, Jesus teaches that no man goes out to war and without counting up the cost first to see if he's able with his number of soldiers to fight against someone uh, who has a greater number. What is the point? You present people true salvation. We don't want to preach this thing in such a manner where people think you can come to Jesus as you are and once you come to Jesus as you are, then you're supposed to stay as you are. No, you come as you are, but Jesus changes you. Once you come into the kingdom, once you get saved, he brings in change. He, he delivers. There's a, there's a shift in your behavior. There's a shift in your lifestyle. When people get saved, when people truly meet Jesus Christ, they're not the same person. You don't, you don't meet Jesus and you were, you, were, you were working in the club and you met Jesus and then you go back to work and three years later you're still in that club. No, 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 no. You, may, you, may, you meet Jesus on Sunday. You may have to go and, and work a notice. But you come out of that stuff because Jesus changes you. Amen. And this new easy believism salvation that is being presented where people can get saved they don't have to change they don't have to do this they don't have to do that uh, they are being uh, misled and then uh, you, you want your hook when people get saved you want your hook to be honest 
Because you don't want to hook them thinking, I can, I can come to Jesus and the Lord's going to save me on drugs and drinking and I can keep drinking and stay on drugs and I can keep doing everything I'm doing only to find out, what the, well, they didn't tell me that I had to change. They didn't say to me that if I accept this Jesus that I would have to be sanctified and come up. I don't know. Had I known that, I don't think I would have gotten saved in the first place. Because I'm not ready to give up my liquor. I, th I thought I could get Jesus and, and keep my liquor. See, that, that's, that, I call that standards by surprise. No, you got to tell people the truth. And then after telling people the truth, let them decide. The religious people were intolerant. Are you following me? Jesus gives a parable that deals with the Lord looking for people. First parable, uh, looking for the lost, was a, the parable of a shepherd. Having lost one sheep, leaves the 99 and goes after the one. The other parable was of a woman who lost one silver coin. She searches the entire, the, her house till she finds the coin and then she's happy. And in, and in both cases, they rejoice when the lost is found. When the things that are out of place are, put, are placed back, put back in place. Then he gives the parable, which is our text. He speaks of a man having two sons. The younger of the two goes to his father and says, give me, give me now what I will get when you die. I want my inheritance. I don't want to wait till you die. I want mine now. So what the father does is he divides inheritance among both sons. He gives the younger what he asks for. But in, in dividing their inheritance, you can't give the younger his and keep the rest. You got to give, give, duel it out to both of them. The younger gets one third. The older gets two thirds. That's, it's called the birthright. Since there were two boys, it was divided in thirds. The older gets the lion's share. He, he got two-thirds, and the younger got one. And then, then the heart of the younger, we talked about this, was revealed because as soon as he got his money, he did what people who are not thinking do. He packed his bags, and he went to a foreign country, and he wasted the money. He blew the money, threw it away in routiest living. He's like most people who win the lottery. Just follow them in a few years. They're right back where they started. Praise the Lord. Because, it's not, it's because in many cases, the problem is not a lack of money. The problem is the way you think. Some of you right now, if, if, if we passed out, gave everybody in here a million dollars and came back 10 years later and, and to see how we were doing, it, you, would be, you would be astounded. You would be shocked to find the number of people who were, would be right back where they were when you first gave them the money because it's mindset. This guy's heart was in the wrong place. The guy leaves home. He joins himself. And when, when he leaves home, he parties hard. Read the text. And he has a ball. And after, after he spends all the money, reality sets in. A famine hits. All of his friends scatter. He's alone. He's a stranger. And in biblical times, if you were a stranger in a foreign country, they treated, they treated foreigners with disdain. With distrust. They were mean to foreigners. Well, this guy was a foreigner that everybody loved. They didn't love him. They loved his money. They enjoyed him. They enjoyed his money. They enjoyed his popularity. They enjoyed his power. And when the money ran out, the friends ran out. And he finds himself broke and in a famine. And he takes a, a job on the low end. He begins to keep uh, hogs, which for a Jew was a, a job that was, ben, was beneath contempt. It was, it, was, it was the lowest of the low. So he's keeping animals that the Bible calls unclean. And what drives him to his knees, what brings him to his knees is hunger. The Bible says, in verse 16 says, and when he would fain, to have eat, to have filled his belly with the husk that the swines did eat. And look at this. All of his friends were gone. And no man gave unto him. And when he came 
to himself. I love uh, other translations of this, partic this particular passage. Uh, young folk, it says, when he came to his senses. When he came to his senses. This desire to leave home, to spend his money, to party hearted, to live for the weekend, like the OJ saying about back in the day, to get down with the get down and all that, he was out of his mind. That is not intelligent thinking. That's the kind of thinking that would cause you to end up in the hog pen feeding, this, feeding the, the, the swines. The Bible says that hunger brought him, I'll show it to you, to his senses. When he came to himself, the Bible teaches that he began to deliberate and have uh, uh, the, the, the deliberations were, were good. Now notice before he was thinking uh, in verse 13, can't wait to leave. Can't wait to go to a foreign country. Can't wait to be on my own. I'm tired of being under mom, tired of being under dad, tired of having, having to listen to my older brother. Can't wait to get on my own. And he gets on his own. Well, when, when he becomes broke and hungry, he begins to deliberate again. And he says in verse, uh, 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 verse 17, he says, he said, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough, not bread enough to eat. My father has slaves. My father has employees who have bread enough to spare. That is, my dad are paying people. The farm that I left, my dad are paying people. My, his, his servants, his low end, his low wage people. His servants, his slaves have bread enough to spare. His slaves are living better than I am. He says, they have bread enough to spare and I perish with hunger. Some of you, you, you shouldn't allow life to put you in positions to where your decisions have put you in, uh, in a place uh, in life where you're nowhere near you sh where you should be. Decisions will do that. You're, you're not living where you, how you should live. You're not at the level you should be because of bad decisions. And you see people. You see people in society. You think to yourself, man, I'm looking at this guy. This guy was born. Uh, he didn't have a mom, didn't have a dad, didn't have support, didn't have anybody working for him, didn't have had everything against him, born on the wrong side of the tracks. And yet this person is doing better than I am. I feel bad about it, and you should. Because uh, to whom much is given, much is required. It, it doesn't bode well. It doesn't speak well. This is kind of truth that you won't hear in most places. It doesn't speak well when you have, have the support in, in your life and structure in your life and all these things going for you, and you disregard all of that and go out there and end up in a hog pen. But, but at least the man came to him, his senses. He said, my dad's slaves are doing better than I am, and I perish with hunger. He continues to deliberate. He says, I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Now, I want to show you something. Follow me on this. Now, this, this is not a, we might not shout today, but I want you to get this. This is true repentance. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 10, For godless sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. When you are godless sorrow, you will turn and you'll never turn back to what you turn from. Godless sorrow causes you to make good decisions when you repent. This young man, notice what he says. He says, I will go to my father and I will say to my father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. That is, what I did was unbecoming of a son of a royal man like you. I am 
no longer worthy. Now, notice how different his repentance is from what we're accustomed to seeing. Most of us, when we mess up, no matter how bad it is, the main thing we want to keep is our position. We want to keep our position and we want to keep our status. Oh, no, I know I messed up, but I don't think it's right if the pastor moved me. This guy suggested that he be moved. He didn't, he didn't say, leave me in my position. Leave me as your son. And you know yourself, his, he was his father's son regardless to how he lived. You can't change that fact. But in his mind, he understood that his actions were so unbecoming and so shameful that he would not return with a hint of arrogance, with a hint of self-defense, with a hint of self-centeredness, but he would come saying, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy to be called your son. He didn't come back demanding his bedroom back. He came back saying, I'm not worthy to even enter into the house. When today, no matter how bad we mess up, we argue our worthiness. That's because there's no true repentance. Very little true repentance. We're more concerned about how we look and our status. I, I said to the Lord when I was studying this, I said, God, you know, the way they enjoyed Thursday night, they're not going to enjoy Sunday the same way because Sunday uh, walks into the church. See, I'm, 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 I'm just getting started. Don't nobody leave now. <laughs> he says, you know what? What I've done, I sinned against heaven, but, but not just against God. But I have sinned against heaven and before thee. Let me tell you something, young people. And those who are in college now who are streaming, and I hope you're streaming this morning. You are given the responsibility to uphold the family name. Well, you know, I'm going to live my life because, you know, I, I, it's my life. I do what I want to. No, 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 no. It is not your life. It, the, the family didn't start with you. The legacy didn't start with you. You are a part of a chain. It's not all about you. Amen. It's not all about you. You're a part of a chain. You have a mama and a daddy. That is a last name attached to you. And you ought to want to bring dignity to that name. You won't hardly hear this anywhere else. But I'm telling you, you have a responsibility. Well, well, I'm going to be the, the black sheep of the family. Well, why, why, why the bad one got to be the black sheep? Why, why can't that mean you're going to be somebody? Something's wrong with us. This young man understood. Because now, notice this. Notice this. He's returned to his senses. Now, when he was out of his mind, he couldn't wait to get away. He couldn't wait to do wrong. He couldn't wait to party hardy. He was out of his mind. Now that he's back in his mind, he realizes that his decisions were horrible. And that they brought shame on the family. Shame to the kingdom. And when he returns, he says, I'm going back and my dad will not have to tell me how bad what I did was. My mom will not have to tell me how bad what I did was. Praise the Lord. I will bring it up. I'll mention it. Praise the Lord. Some of us want to, we, you, you want to embarrass the church and still serve in the church. Hurt the church and still, and still want to be the face of of the church. You want to hurt your business, but still want to represent the business. So for you got to fight them to just stand, stand down for a minute so that we can at least regroup and then you stand down with an attitude. Sit over there like you haven't done damage. When you've done damage like that, you ought to run to the sideline. I can't hear out of this monitor right here. Amen. This guy says, I did damage. This is tight. 
I did damage. And I'm not worthy. That's good. Uh, I'm not worthy to be called your son. He says, but I got to eat. I got to eat. I got to live. Hire me. Make me a slave. Let me be one of your hired servants. Because at least your hired servants have food to eat. And he arose. He left home. He got his story together. Got his deliberations. And came to his father. But when he was, praise the Lord, yet a great way off. The father saw him and ran from him. No, the father saw him and had compassion. Let me park here for a minute. Because right here, right here, Jesus, right here, because you know what I'm teaching now, I'm always saying something, if you're listening. My, my style of communications is I set things up. I just told you in the opening that the problem that the Pharisees and the scribes had with Jesus was that Jesus received the publicans. Jesus received the sinners and he ate with them and he loved them and he preached to him to them. Here Jesus is showing the Pharisees how far they had drifted from the mission of the church and the mission of religion. You've, you've become so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. He backhand them because the Father represents God. And notice this, when the father saw his son coming the bible teaches that he met him halfway what's the point what was what, the teaching there it showed that the father had been habitually looking and expecting his son's return Oh, you ought to be glad to see people come to Jesus. I don't care if they've done you wrong. If they come to Jesus, you should be glad to see them come to Jesus. If they repent, you ought to be glad to see them come to Jesus because he sinned against his father. But even though he sinned against his father, his father kept an eye out. His father would every day go and sit with all that he had to do. Because dad didn't have as much to do because he had divided the inheritance with both of the boys. So he would look. Maybe today is the day. Maybe today is the day. Maybe today. Maybe this week. Maybe, 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 maybe. But one day, and you know what? Because he was the boy's daddy, he could tell from a distance. He could tell by the way he walked. That's my son. That's my child. And uh, unlike the uh, Pharisees and the, the, sag the, the scribes who resented the presence of the loss the dad ran out and embraced him met his son the boy smelled just like where he'd come from the hog pen when he saw him afar off his father ran on and then when he when he when he met him the bible teaches are you look, looking at this say so met him with compassion see compassion is more than feeling sorry for something for someone. Compassion is doing something about it. First of all, compassion made him run. See, compassion kept him, number one, compassion kept him looking. It was compassion. Kept him looking for his son. Then when he saw him, compassion caused him to run toward his son. And it was compassion that caused him, after he got to him, to, to run and to fall on his neck. 
throw his hand around him. And then compassion calls him to do something. The Bible says, and he kissed him, which in Eastern times was a sign of acquittal. 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 Whatever you did. Before you even get a chance to give me your story, before you even get a chance to tell me how wrong what you did was, I want you to know, you're forgiven. Everybody in here ought to thank God for that kiss. Glory, glory, glory. And don't you forget that you've had the kiss of acquittal applied to your life. Well, I ain't going to let it go until they repent. What if God would have done you like that? What if the Lord would be holding it so we'd be in trouble? But he grabbed him and he kissed him and he forgave him. He had compassion on him and uh, he was so glad to see his son. And, And unlike the Pharisees and the scribes standing there upset with the publicans and the sinners Jesus said the father ran to him the father hugged him the father kissed him let me tell you something saints let us not be so heavenly bound that we're no earthly good we're not called to hate sinners we're not called to have disdain for sinners that we tell the people who come down to the clinic, now look, if you have a problem, don't come. If you got a, if you got a temper problem, don't come. If, if you can't love folk as they talk junk to you, don't come. If, if, as, if as a person of color, you can't take it, if, if a racial slur is hurled, hurled at you, don't come. That means you need to grow. Because see, when you get saved, like the Bible says, you, you're motivated by love. Love got to get you to the clinic. Love got to get you down to the homeless shelter. Love causes you to forgive. Yes, I feel something. And what did the father do? Are you praying for me? The father, the father, he hugged him. He kissed him, which was a sign of acquittal. And look at what he did. And uh, the Bible says, and the son said to his father, Father, see, you see the integrity of both men. See, a lesser person would have said, well, I ain't going to say what I started to say now. Oh, he's already received me. I I ain't going to even bring it up. Some things you ought to bring up. When you are where you should be spiritual, you will come in and say, you know what, Pastor? I was wrong. What you mean trying to have a, uh, you're going to be standoffish when you messed up. When you get right. When you get right, you will initiate the reunion. Well, I'm just going to stand over here. Well, stand there then and see whose side God's on. When you get right, Praise Lord, you you over in the bedroom mad with your parents because they have you on lockdown and you were the ones who broke curfew. See, so that's how that's how to get your mouth moved to the left side of your face. Praise the Lord. They think you had a stroke you slapped so hard. <laughs> what happened? What happened? I know what happened. You forgot, you forgot. With all of that forgiveness, that boy showed his character. He showed that he was really repentant because you know what he did? And the son said to the father, he still said it, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and are no more worthy to be called thy son. Not trying to make it less wrong, not trying to shine a favorable light on what he did, not what I was wrong, but here's an addendum to make it look a little less than what it was. No, I was wrong. And I'm not worthy 
to be called your son. See, it's good that he went on and said it. And that now, 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 now Jesus is talking to the publican. And talking to the sinners. See? Yeah. Now you got to repent now. That's right. You got to repent. You got to repent. Praise the Lord. Uh, are you all following me? Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, praise the Lord. And it says here, well, but the father said, notice what he does. He, the father shifts his attention. He didn't even listen to his son no more. He began to talk to his servants. He said to his servants, uh, bring forth the robe. Bring forth the best robe. Well, whose robe was the best robe? It was the father's robe. He didn't go back in the closet and find some old dead, moth-eaten robe with holes in it. He said, go get the back, get my robe. When the Lord gave Jesus to die for our sins, he gave the best. Glory to God. An angel was not his best. God gave his best to get, get the, 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 the best role. And then he said, not only that, uh, but uh, and put, praise the Lord, and put it on him. Go get it. Uh, so now they run with it. But their natural inclination would be to put it on the daddy. Dad said, no. Nah. Put it on him. But he's smelly. He smells like the hog pen. Put it on him anyhow. I, 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 I came to Jesus as I was. I was weary, wounded, smelly, and sad. But I a resting place and he made me glad somebody praise God if he cleaned you up when he saved you and James what I'm glad about what I'm glad about is the Lord didn't do like some religious people do the Lord didn't tell me before he could put the robe on me that I had to get clean he put it on me while I was dirty because see the robe is what's gonna clean me up see we got to be careful it takes the Lord to clean up so he says put it on him give him the robe and put it on him are you with me yes, sir. and then he says and put a ring on his hand the ring is a sign of sonship praise the Lord the robe is a sign of true acceptance and the restoration to royalty. And not only that, but uh, I know that uh, you are willing to become a servant. You are willing to become a slave. I know that you look like a slave. For slaves were barefooted. Slaves didn't have sandals. They didn't have shoes. Father looked at him and said, Go get some shoes and put shoes on his feet. Because, see, I, I'm restoring him completely. Because I don't want nobody to look at him and mistake him and think that he might be a slave who stole a robe and stole a ring. No, he's my son. And he's got to have shoes on his feet. Because slaves don't wear shoes. And so now he says, now put the shoes on his feet. And, and that ain't all. That ain't all, that ain't all, that ain't all. Now, now go, go, go and get the fatted calf. You know that big one. And kill him. And kill it. Oh, you, you vegeta vegetarians. Vegetarians and vegans, I, I guess you would have been left out. 
But I tell you this, Patrick Wooden would have had him a, 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 I'd be eating a big steak that day and telling God thank you. And uh, so he said, now go and kill the fatted calf. And look at this. And, uh, and let us eat. And look at this. This connects the third parable to the first two. And be merry. They were merry when they found the lost sheep. She was mer the shepherd was merry when he found his lost, lost sheep. The woman was merry when she found her lost coin. And God, the father, was merry when his lost son came back home. We ought to look around at each other today and see all these saved folk up in here and be merry. You ought to be glad that the Lord brought us in and saved us. So now, now really, if you would have dealt with the son uh, according to the law, you know what they would have had? They wouldn't have had a feast. According to the law of the times, uh, what was uh, appropriate, what, was he what they were headed for. They weren't headed for no feast. He was starving to death. He was headed for a funeral. He'd been working with unclean animals. He was headed to death, but instead of God giving him a funeral, God gave him a feast. That's one reason why I'm so glad to be saved today. Because I have a feast when if the Lord would have given me what I deserve, he would have given me a funeral a long time ago. I wonder today, do I have anybody here who is enjoying your feast? But you know that God would have been just to give you a funeral. But instead of a funeral, he put a feast in your life. Are you glad today? Give God praises for blessing you to have a feast. When there should have been a funeral. Oh, Lord. And uh, then he said, now we're going to celebrate them. Because this, my son, was dead. That's why he should have had a funeral. He was dead. He was dead. And is alive again. I wonder if I get ten people to, who, who, who recognize that before they came to Jesus, they were dead. I'm not talking about dying, but dead. Dead in trespasses. Dead in sin. He said, this my son was dead. And now is alive again. He was lost and is found. And look at what happened. And they began to be merry. The church house band broke out. And when they got in a drive, they didn't change the beat. Just, just, just keep it going. Huh? Huh? They got a little slow. Then right? they slowed down. They kept the drive. Folk was celebrating. Everybody was happy. And you know, if Jesus was an entertainer preacher. And uh, he would have closed the sermon right there because now everybody is on a high note. Everybody's waving their hands. Everybody's celebrating. Go tell 10 people. Go tell 15 people. Go tell 30 people. They're telling each other they're happy, they're glad. But Jesus said, I, I can't let it in on a high note because I had two sons. And two. So far, everybody's happy. The shepherd is happy because he found his lost sheep. The widow is happy because she found, the woman is happy because she found her lost silver coin. The father is happy because his younger lost son returned. Oh, but now the spotlight light shifts. 
to the older brother. Unlike the father's positive, joyful attitude. I hate to bring it down. On this our church anniversary, unlike his positive attitude, Number one, you're going to see that the older brother was surprised that uh, his sinful younger brother returned. Number two, that he was jealous of the father's celebration. Number three, that he became angry at his father's forgiving love. And number four, declared his own self-righteousness. Filthily focused on his brother's sinfulness rather than his new found repentance. Everybody's happy. Everybody's glad. Then we had to go to verse 25. Now the elder son was in the field. He's not working. And when he came and drew nigh to the house. He heard music and dancing. Now y'all know how we do when we hear music and dancing. Hey, don't even know what it is. You start to groove. You have, you have to watch yourself. Uh, Tom told me the other day they were. Uh, he took Mama out to the restaurant and yeah, went to the little boys' room and came back and some were playing over the. In a calm and you know, my mom was a musician. Mama, 80 something years old, groove. <laughs> oh, I, I know I've been, I've been guilty. I was in, I was out with Bishop Woolard one time, and boy, something came on the radio that I liked. Might have been the Four Tops or somebody. <laughs> and I had, to, I had to catch myself. I said, Oh Lord, don't let Bishop see me. Ain't no woman like the one I got. Oh man, I, I could feel it. Yes, sir. This guy could hear music and dancing. And most people get glad when they hear music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and says, What? And asked what these things meant. And he said to him, the servant said, Notice how the servant started. He, this, you could tell there was joy in the servants. He says, thy brother. That should have been enough. Because if you've heard music and dancing, that means your brother's not dead. If you go there and you hear you had sad music from a distance. I remember to this day. I remember to this day. I remember to this day like it was yesterday. The look on my mother's face when I came home from school one day. And I walked into the house, and my mama looked at me and said, Son, sit down. I got to tell you something about your daddy. And I looked at her face, and I saw a look on my mother's face that I had never seen before. And I said to my mother, He's dead. And then she explained. The music told him. If you hear music and dancing, and then the slave says, thy brother. You know what? It should have been 20 minutes later before, when that guy stopped dancing that the slave could finish explaining. But oh, no. Oh, no. He said, thy brother is come. And thy father have killed the fatted calf. Because he hath received him. Same received. As in verse 2. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured. Saying that this man receiveth sinners. Well your father received. Your brother. Received him. Safe. And sound. Verse 28, ought, the first clause, ought not to be possible. That shows the prodigality of the oldest son. 
the Bible says, and he began to be angry. Now, the truth is, we're more like him than we, we want to admit. Because people, oh, I'm the pastor, have trouble being happy for other people. Especially if you think that they're getting a recognition that you think should be yours. I said, Lord, this, 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 we're not going to end on a high note on this one. The Lord says, I, intentionally. We're more like this guy. See, most of us aren't like, this is why people preach the younger son the most. It, he's easy to preach. Oh, yeah. But this older guy, nah, he, he's church of God in Christ. <laughs> he, 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 he's modern, modern, modern church folk. He's modern, modern the, the modern believer. If, if we don't think, never mind now, his oldest son is not the father. He's not the father. I don't think pastor should have did that, and I'm, I'm not going to get with it. But you're not the pastor. See, you're not even qualified to think on that level because you're not the pastor. I don't think the pastor, you're not. The, so you know what you ought to do? Perish that thought. And say, you know what? You may say, I don't understand it, but let me get with it. Let me be happy. He got angry. Do, do you all see that? Are you looking at this? He got angry and look at this. Oh, and boycotted. Well, I'm not going to participate. I, I'm, not go, I, I'm not with it, so I, I'm not going. Oh, my sister in the black top with the, I knew that I wasn't going to get many amens when I got to this part before I got to church. I said, they're going to get quiet on me up in here. Up in here. They may punish me. So we're going to let you go see dad by yourself. It wouldn't surprise me, older brother, if you did. That's the point. That's the point. We're more like him than we like to think that we are. The Bible says, and he refused. Do you see that? Refused to come in. Refused to go in. He wouldn't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Going. I'm not. Everybody else in there. By now they break dancing. And then doing that line, that like line, you know how to do it, that line then. <laughs> everybody's getting down. Everybody's full. Everybody's having a ball. And the oldest brother stand up. Not even realizing that that is so beneath him. Let me tell you something. You can't be big with little eating you up. I'm not going in. I'm not. I'm not. So you know what the father did? The father being the father. Guess what? Now, now by now, see, Jesus, the, the, the Pharisees, and the scribes are bleeding now. Your nose bleeding, mouth bleeding. Because Jesus just because they're the older brother. He's hitting them all in the mouth now. So, so I got you where I want you. They just they look like Joe Frazier. Remember all he was? Oh man. So now he's, he's, he's got them. And so um, while they're standing there blooded, then Jesus showed showed them something. Just as I left my home to go meet. The younger brother. I'm going to leave the party and go out and meet the older brother. He's showing the Pharisees and the scribes God had to leave the party for all of us. There ain't nobody in here whom the Lord didn't have to leave the party to get to. 
So nobody can get on a perch. Nobody can, you know, I'm, I'm all that. No, 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 no. He left the party for all of us. He left the party for all of us. So he goes out to meet the older son. And uh, his father came and entreated him. He didn't go out and punch him. He entreated him. Asked him, what's wrong? Why are you out here? Why are you acting like this? What is this attitude? I can hear the older son now. What attitude? The one that's keeping you from going into party, into the party. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You know, yeah, yeah. ain't nothing wrong. I'm, I'm fine myself. Now you're going to hell. For lying. He entreats him. He entreats him. And, and he answered and said to his father. Lo, these many years, I do serve thee. That was disrespectful. Because it was not true. You are the eldest son. You have done what is your duty. You played your role. Yes, yes. I told you all that my mama didn't have any daughters. My mama had all boys. And that she's going to be all right because she's got us. You ain't never heard me ask for no special offering for my mama. I never asked you to send my mama anything. And I've never asked you to praise me for anything that I do for my mama. Because there is nothing that I can do for her Amen. that would be praise worthy. Amen. It's what sons do. Amen. Some of us want we, some of us want so much praise for doing our job. Right, Throw the ball, the, the, the athlete catch the ball, and 40 minutes later he's still celebrating. You paid $5 million a year to catch the ball. What is all this? You're running around doing a backflip and you're jumping and screaming like you did something. You paid to catch the ball. All these years I have served. No, 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 no. All these years you came up on a farm. You came up on a ranch. You were privileged to be a wealthy man's son who taught you the business from the time you were born up until now. You didn't understand what he was doing for you. Bishop, well, that's why dad, today, this evening is so important. He pulled me in. He didn't make me by allowing me to be his first assistant. He didn't become more bishop when he pulled me in. He was bishop. His status didn't uh, grow when he made me a superintendent. He was all that he is right now before he assigned me to anything. He pulled me in. He didn't pull me in. For me to instruct him, he pulled me in for me to learn. This guy says, Lo, these years, it was a disrespectful attitude toward his father. Look it up, you see that this is not off the top of my head, theologians and Commentators and commentaries agree. Lo, these many years do I serve thee. Never transgressed. Look at him. Touting his own horn. <laughs> the Bible says, all men will proclaim their own goodness. Y'all thought that was a long walk, didn't you? I did good. All men will proclaim their own goodness. These years I have served thee. Neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. 
It sounded like his name was God. It must have been Jesus. Jesus is the only one who perfectly did the will of the Father. I've served you. I've never transgressed. And yet, thou never givest me a kid. I'm just going to let that sink in. I'm going to look at the lights. Amen, lights. Because we're quick to say stuff like that. You did this for this person. You acted like that for this person. You did this for that. But you never done it for me. The older brother. You see why we don't preach him much? See why we want to call the young son the prodigal? The young son threw away money. The older son threw away relationship. The younger son threw away his daddy's money. The older son threw away uh, the opportunity to learn his dad's spirit. Notice, the younger son's behavior is nothing like his father's. When he, when, when, uh, the older son, when it should have been just like his father. If you've been that close, you've done all that, how are you going to do all that and, and, and not sound like him? Not act like him? Not respond like him? You would have thought if dad did all of that, then the older son should have went in and began to, and, will, and will, would have been the greatest party animal because he's just like his daddy only to find out he was nothing like his father because he blew the relationship. He wasted it. He didn't get his father's spirit. Pastor, are you going to try to climb back to the top? No, Jesus didn't climb to the top with this. We're going to end this one. We're getting re I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to pray and you're going to come to the altar. <laughs> Say amen. He says, I, I, you never gave me a party and that I might make merry with my friends. We never got a chance to do any of this. But just as soon as this, thy son, not this, my brother. Am I preaching Bible? As soon as thy son was come. Which, now let me just tell you how, low, how, how no good he was. Which devoured thy living with harlots. Thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. One of the interesting things is. The son did a better job, the younger son did a better job of describing his sinfulness than the older brother. That's a lesson right there to the person who commits the sin. Stop trying to make your sin look less sinful. He did a great job of showing how low he went. So when the older, older brother said he wasted the, the living with Hollis, uh, amen. I hear some of the brothers saying right now, what's wrong with that? No, the boy messed up. The boy messed up. The boy messed up. I thought I'd put a little tongue and cheek in there to kind of lift the moment. Because some of y'all getting uncomfortable. So as soon as he comes back, thou killed, has killed for him the fatted you're celebrating him. And one of the problems with the oldest son is he did not recognize that sometimes the greatest form of celebration is no celebration. Remember, Jesus said there's more rejoicing going on in heaven. They make a bigger deal out of one who repents than 99 just persons who doesn't need it. See, the 99 didn't need it. I'd, I'd much rather be in the 99. I'd much rather be in the 99. The Bible says, more blessed to give than to receive. I'd, I'd much, uh, uh, I'd much uh, uh, be, rather be in the position where I can give than have to be in the position where I gotta receive. You gotta, you gotta know when the Lord has blessed you. I'm almost done, I've gone, I've gone long today. I'm almost done, but look at this. 
He says, he says, he says, you didn't kill the calf for me. And he said unto him, son. You are always with me. Look at this. And all that I have is thine. You got more than this. Sometimes the people who, who receive the most do the most comparing. You got more. You, you we're talking about a party. How long can a party last? Your son, your brother came back with nothing. I'm restoring him, restoring him. You don't need restoration. You got the, the, the double portion. You got the lion's share. You are enjoying blessings that perhaps your son trying to play catch up will never enjoy. But your son, your, your brother, I mean, excuse me, but your brother was restored. It's all yours. You, it's, it's yours. But your brother is starting over. Why is this bothering you? You didn't need a restoration party. You didn't, you didn't need a party saying, I threw away everything, but thank God I made it back by the skin of my teeth. You didn't need that because you never went through that. So we don't have to uh, throw, uh, uh, do an acquittal kiss and a restoration party because you were wise enough to stay in the fold. And you know what? You benefited from it. You got a double portion. Who else got what you got? Who else have had the opportunities that have come your way? You received. What are you complaining about? You received. You got blessed. I wish black folk understood that. We, the, we are told the wrong thing. These, these liberal leftists got black folk mad at America, black folk mad at the country, black folk always, uh, we're protesting everything. We protest the NFL, the largest creator of black millionaires in the history of man. We protest everything. But now, but I, I tell you what, go down to North Hills around sundown and go down there by uh, Starbucks and watch the Arabs and the Muslims when they come out. Watch how all these other people come out and they're celebrating. Watch how the Hispanics and everybody else, they're fighting to get into the country and they're celebrating the country. They recognize the, the, the glory of being an American. I was visiting someone in the hospital just two days ago and I said to the man who was there, who, who served in, uh, I think, the Air Force, and I said to him, I said, thank you, sir, for your service. A brother, he said to me, I want to thank you for your support. He said, because most people in America have never lived outside of America. They don't know. This is a black guy. He said, he said, they don't know how you're treated abroad simply because you're an American. See, Americans get preferred treatment. Americans get this, Americans get that, because the rest of the world, regardless of what the news tell you, the rest of the world know that you're blessed to be an American. But you, don't, but you know who don't know how blessed we are to be Americans? The average African American, because you're listening to the wrong people. A black man can't do nothing, can't be nothing in America. What? American black men have it better than black men have it anywhere else in this world. The guy was blessed. The guy was, I'm, I'm too long. The guy was blessed and he didn't even know it. He was privileged. You don't need, I don't want to have a getting out of prison party. I don't want to, I hope I never have one. I hope they never throw, I hope they never throw a celebration for me. We're going to celebrate Patrick Wooden. Why? Because he, he went all the way up to being a bishop and threw it all away. But thank God he came back to Jesus last Sunday. So let's have a party because we'll welcome him back. 
And then somebody who's been in church all the time, so standing there, well, they, they didn't have no appreciation for me. Right. You know, sometimes I want to give up, Judge. I said, Lord, something's wrong. Something is wrong. We, we got to develop a biblical mindset. He said to this man, I, I'm done, I'm done. My time is far spent. He says, everything I have is thine. It was right. It was right, meet, M-E-E-T. It was right that we should be make merry and be glad. For this, uh, let me uh, correct you, <clears throat> because in verse 30 you call him my son. Let me correct you in verse 32. This, thy brother. Let's, let's get it right. Your brother. This, thy brother was dead. And is alive again. And was lost. And now is found. The man had two sons. The story closes with the younger son who represents the publicans and the sinners saved. It closes with him in the house rejoicing. It closes with the oldest son, the elder son, who represents the religious order, the Pharisees, and the scribe who represents the church folk, it closed with him out of fellowship. We don't know if the eldest son ever even entered the house. Jesus ended the parable right there. In fact, by implications, it is implied that he didn't. Because he goes on to another subject. And he said unto his disciples, that was a certain rich man. And he, he goes to something else. He leaves that. Lord, I don't want to be like this oldest son. I want my heart right. I don't want to live my life with constant comparisons. See, the eldest son should not have compared the response that was given to his brother to the response that was given to him because he got it all anyway. That's a dangerous thing to do. Everybody's sitting around looking at to see how you're going to, be. if you're going to say something about this one and not about that one, if you're going to do this with this one and not, you can't do that, people. You can't do that. There's a place for it, but it's not every place. It's not every service. It's not every Sunday. You can't, you can't, you can't approach God saying, Lord, you did this, 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 and a third, fourth, fifth, and sixth for others. Well, Lord, what are you doing for me? The Lord will look at you right quick and say, my relationship that I have with them and with them. What does that have to do with you? Do you know that's the Bible? Peter said, I thought, said, Jesus, I think that I, I, I think I overheard you say to John that John was going to live until you return. Jesus says, that's not what I told John. But even if I had have told John that, what is that to you? That's between me and John, not me and you. I want my relationship to be right with God. Different kind of altar call. Preacher, I want my attitude right. Preacher, I don't want to be like the younger brother, and I don't want to be like the older brother. And for the parts of me that may contain both, or more of one, or more of the other, or less of the other, whatever the case may be, I want you to pray for me. If you're strong enough and honest enough and spiritual enough to come to the altar, on an altar call like this, say, I'm not going to even couch it. I'm not going to... So I'm not going to camouflage you to say, I want to pray for cars, I want to pray for houses. No, I want my attitude right. I want to see things right, Lord. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. For reasons of my own, I strayed away from God. 
for reasons of my own I walked away from my Lord for reasons of my own and they were the wrong reasons I strayed I did I did and for reasons of my own I walked away from my Lord I'm a changed man but now I stand with understanding And I'm gonna serve the Lord. Now I stand with understanding. And I'm willing to obey. Father, we come before you, not ending intentionally on a high note. For you didn't close this one on a high note. Lord, the way it crescendoed, we just knew it would end with the sun coming home. Restored. Here she caught up on something. Home. But Jesus, you kept on talking. And we don't want to, to make the mistake of assuming that what you had to say about the elder son deserves less attention than what you had to say about the younger. For you said in the infancy of the parable, that a certain man had two sons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lord, we see ourselves in both sons. Hallelujah. Deliver us, Lord. Cleanse us, Lord Jesus. Wash us, Lord Jesus. Mm. Those elements, those elements, of the elder and the younger son that resides in us. Lord, take it away. And Father, we ask that you would make us more like you. We see the love and compassion that you show to both sons. Glory to God. We see that you were the one who, were, who was sinned against by both sons. And you were the ones who forgave both sons. But Lord, we learn from the younger what to do in terms of how to repent. And we learn from the elder what not to do. So Father, we stand before you today and we repent of our sins. We do not repent with an addendum. We do not repent with a uh, hyphen or a asterisk. That's what I search for. An asterisk beside our repentance. We don't repent, but then say, but Lord, you know, if this had not happened, I wouldn't have done. No, 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 Lord, we're wrong. Forgive us. We've sinned against you. Forgive us. We've sinned and come short of the glory of God. Forgive us. We shouldn't have said it. We shouldn't have done it. We just shouldn't have. Forgive us. In the name of Jesus. We celebrate your restoring others, realizing that you've restored us. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for your love, Father. Thank you for your care, Father. Thank you for your provisions. And Lord, I thank you for loving me so much that when I came from the hog pen, you met me halfway. I thank you for loving me so much that when I came with the wrong attitude, you left the party and went out to meet me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus.
Now we praise you for the restoration. We praise you for the restoration. We praise you for the restoration. We praise you for the cleansing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. 